we got the party you want to crash. It's Maximum Exposure. With jaw-dropping, shoulder-popping, head-banging wipeouts you won't see anywhere else. For sale, really cherry race car, low miles, only driven on Sundays. Oh, it needs work. Pain exists only in the mind. Oh, and the crotch. Bombing down a mountain, head first. Divas take a dive. Oh, we love ballet. Horses take on rich guys. Rich guys lose. And lose. And lose. And lose. Hello. Finish lines that way. Doctor, it only hurts when I do this. Surfer versus Wayne. Wave wins. And wins. And wins. And wins. Three, two, one, lift off. Bad news? That ain't no plane. We got us some big time major league wipeouts. So we're calling this show, well, wipeouts. dies in this show. Hey, how's that for an opening? But it is a virtual list of don't ever try this warnings. Now that said, it's race night at Indiana's Kokomo Speedway. And that can only mean one thing. Time for a really nasty crash. Wow, ah, told ya. Again in slow motion. Now, while you're watching this wreck, keep in mind one thing. The driver, Greg Stevens, named his car Jesus. We're about to find out what role divine intervention's gonna play. When his pit crew gets to him, Greg isn't moving. There ain't much they can do but wait for paramedics. Greg is put on a backboard, pulled from the wreckage, and rushed to a hospital. Good news? No head or spinal injuries. Bad news? Two broken arms and a broken neck. We got up on a wheelie coming up, too, and uh, when it come down, it kind of pitched, pitched the left front of the car, and my wheels were turned just a little right, and I just hooked it and started barrel rolling down the back stretch. The car foot barrel rolled about 10 to 14 times, and uh, pretty much I blacked out as soon as it started. Well, since you blacked out, Greg, let's look at it frame by frame and see exactly how many rolls you did. Keep an eye out around roll four or five when his arms go limp. That's probably when Greg started ragdolling while he's barrel rolling. All right, here we go. Viewers, count along. One. Two. Three. Four. Now, there goes Greg's arms. Five. Six. Seven. We make 10? Do we? Do we? No! It's gotta be 9! Wipeout Supreme! What drives me to skateboard is the good time that I have when I'm either out with my friends or when I go out cruising by myself. Good times, huh? Wow! Hate to see the bad times, dude! There ain't nothing like a wipeout on a skateboard. When you get going one way at such speed and your wheels turn the wrong way, it causes your body to keep going in one direction, your board goes the other one, and you just go straight down to the concrete. There are just so many different ways to eat it. I, I just do it because it feels good. And so many different body parts you can hurt. Yeah, I wipe out all the time. No, I just go free falling. Broke my foot, bruised my rib, hit my head, cut my ear. And then there's this body part. Most guys won't cop to how much this hurts. They try to take it with a smile. It's a feeling like no other. You can't even describe it. It's the best feeling in the world. Oh, yeah. Just check out the crushed genitals. This is G.
Josh Saunders. His sport is BMX. He lives for the rush. And there ain't nothing that gets between Josh and his thrill fix. This guy's all attitude. He seems to have a very high pain threshold. Josh is about to perform a trick called the feeble grind. Notice anything missing? Like knee pads, elbow pads, wrist guards, helmet. Yeah, they'd be pretty handy right about now. Here's that wipeout again, slower and closer. Josh starts down the brick wall when his front wheel skids off the wall. He loses control and plunges head first to the pavement. Ouch! Here's where the marks start, where my back peg hit. My front wheel hit about here, and then it went over. And that's the front, that's the mark that my front peg made when it, the wheel went over. And it just kind of catapulted me to where about that front wheel is. And straight onto my head. I just remember going over and then a little bit of hitting. I don't remember a whole lot else and getting up and stumbling around. Uh, I fractured my eighth vertebrae and five contusions on my brain. It hasn't stopped Josh. Somehow we think this won't be his last wipeout. Valdez, Alaska. Site of the World Extreme Skiing Championship. How tough are these guys? They're choppered in. Dropped on the side of a treacherous mountain. And have to ski down. This is the grace and style of a champion. And this is the terrifying wipeout of somebody who ain't. That's Garrett Bartelt, bouncing down the mountain, totally out of control. This fall could break every bone in Garrett's body. Listen to what one of the guys in the mountain asks. You okay, dude? This is why you should pick your skiing buddies very carefully. You okay, dude? Yeah, I like, sure, dude. He just slammed his way down a thousand feet of snow and rock. Now let's hear Garrett's take on what happened. At the top of the run, I, I knew I was in trouble. When I gained a lot of speed and started cartwheeling, and then it was just sky, snow, sky, snow, and got a little scary down towards the cliff section. Not good. Garrett's heading straight for this rock. After I smacked the rock, I didn't try to recover at all. You okay, dude? After that point, I, then I was more like a rag doll the last couple hundred feet. Patroller asked me, did you break your leg? And I said, I don't know. And I lifted it up and it bent between my knee and my hip. And at that point, it was just a real anxious feeling. Let's look at it frame by frame. You can see that it was right here when Garrett smacked the rock that he busted his leg. Yeah, busted all right in three places. It's now held together with a metal rod. But that ain't all. My boot hit me right here. So I got the measurements of my boot stamped into my forehead. I don't mind that the event was videoed. I lived through it. I'm skiing again. And Garrett, let's hope you never have to hear this again. You okay, dude? You okay, dude? You okay, dude? Max X, wake up and smell the pain. Next, horses show off their horse sense. Humans must go. The big kahuna of wipeouts. And you thought your girlfriend's a lousy driver. The horses are on the track. So are the riders. Ballet, culture the Max X way. Jet skis are really fun, unless you do something like this. If that ain't enough to make you wince, stick around for our Max X list of wipeouts. Max X, Extreme Reality TV. Maximum exposure. So cool, it rules. It's time for ballet the Max X way. Let's start with the ladies.
Okay, out of my way, out of my way. It's time for the spandex wearing dudes. Now it's my solo. It's your last solo, bud. Keep your eye on that spinning ball attached to that stick. Nobody got nailed. Check out Mr. Medieval Happy Pants swinging his long chain. Whap! Hold on, you're slipping. You're slipping. Damn. Oh, Max X, we just love the ballet. It's Sopranos Appreciation Night at the track in Henderson, Kentucky. Race seven, and the cast has pooled a million bucks and bet it on a real long shot. Horse number three to win. You think the Sopranos know something? They're off. It's a nine-horse pileup, and the only one left standing is horse number three. Which wins going away? Here's that wipeout from another angle. Let's see it again. Amazing how the Sopranos horse is the only one that doesn't go down. The mob. They sure know how to pick them. You know, you usually don't see really rich people getting hurt. They usually hire other people to get hurt for them. But here's that rare chance to laugh at some rich Brits wiping out. Bring them on and keep them coming. Somewhat rich. Smack. Very rich. Eat it! Nouveau rich. Down. Old world money. Whack! Range Rover phone talking rich. Hanging up. Trust fun kid. Not impressed. Jet set and Euro trash. Oh yeah! Royal family dude. Royal payback. Max X. It's all about the maximums. Coming up, the winner of the car flipping contest. A downhill downfall. State park rule. Stay on the trail. Here's a plan. Spend a lot of money fixing up a car, then crash it. And a guy learns just how limber he is. For more bone bruising and back breaking, watch our Max X list of wipeouts. Maximum exposure. Television to ease your pain. It's maximum exposure and in-your-face wipeouts. We know why we watch car races. The crashes. As a public service, we've eliminated the races. And we're going to bring you a whole bunch of nasty crashes. The driver of car 21 is not a professional. He's a rank amateur. He's behind the wheel of a car his friend rented. Hope he didn't decline the collision coverage. Yeah, he probably did. Hey, let's take a look in slow motion. The car smacks the garbage. Goes airborne. Slams into the ground. Rolls a few times and bursts into flames. Right around now, this dude's probably thinking, oh, I am so glad this is a rental. The driver, Dennis Chitwood, suffered a gash across his forehead, a cracked sternum, a broken back in three places, and a gnarly case of bad hair. Well, after the, after the crash, I was sitting in the car there, and I got my, got my helmet off, and I noticed that the blood was running down my face pretty bad, and, uh, and I couldn't move. It took months for this novice to recover. Was that your first and last race, Dennis? Nobody's tried to talk me out of racing. A lot of my friends are anxious to see me get back in and uh, put on an exciting show for them. Yeah, we are too, Dennis. You just can't borrow our car. You're looking at a classic 1941 Willys Coupe. Valued at about $100,000. Whoa, cherry. The owners decided to enter it a drag race. This is only his second race. But hey, what could happen? Hang on, Dave. Two. 
slow motion. The car driven by Carl Harry explodes off the starting line. But about 300 feet down the track, watch his combination moves. He starts out with a simple half roller, but that gives him the momentum for a two-step sky bounce with a half gainer twist, ending with a back flop reverse side flip, complete with a jelly roll, and now a nose plant pirouette leading to a left crunch back double axle landing. Very reminiscent of an early Tanya Harding routine. Amazingly, that right there is Carl climbing out of the wreckage, unhurt. So, dude, what went wrong? I beat him off the line big time and shifted in a second. Everything's great, going nice and straight, just getting ready to hit third gear. And all of a sudden, the car turned right real hard, and I thought, oh my god, here we go. Yeah. Here we go right to the junkyard. The car was totaled, but it was worth it. Well, for us at least. Thanks for the wipeout, dude. It's midget race car night at the Cal Expo track in Sacramento, California. You know, someone's gonna wipe out. But how many flips are they gonna do? A, one to five flips. B, 5 to 10 flips, C, 10 to 15 flips, or D, 0 flips and quit yanking our chain. No, we're not yanking your chain, but he's yanking his. Oh, look at that car roll. Looks like a 10 to 15er to me. Let's take a slow motion. It's funny car time as the midget racer is turned into a bouncing hunk of scrap metal doesn't look survivable. Well, unless you're Super Cory Cruzman, he only got a concussion and broke his arm in three places. Well, the first thing that you think when a car starts flipping like that is uh, you kind of tuck your head down and, and tense up and, you know, go to hang on. But I, I would say probably after two or three of them, I was knocked uh, cuckoo there. Not cuckoo? Oh, that's a technical term for lights out. Here's that spectacular wipeout from another angle. As I watch the videotape of that tumble, I, I still get chills. Chills us too, dude. And now let's see just how many flips the car did. Follow the bouncing midget and count along. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. And fourteen. Now that's a damn fine wipeout. Seen enough car crashes yet? Well, we haven't. These are the Cajun Nationals drag races in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. One of these high adrenaline dragsters is going to crash and burn big time. Hint, its colors are blue and white. Again in slow motion. The car driven by R.C. Sherman is traveling at 175 miles an hour. The impact rips the car's body right off its frame. See that burning wreckage skidding down the track? RC is trapped inside. Here's the rescue highlights. Douse the flames, cut RC out of the roll cage, backboard him, and rush him to the hospital. Car started to go a little to the right. So I turned the wheel to the left, and it didn't make any difference. It kept going. The car was still at full throttle, even though I had taken my foot off. That's when I knew that, I, that we had a problem here, because 
there's no amount of brakes in the world that's going to hold back 6,000 horsepower. Yeah, you got that right. I saw the red and white guardrail coming at me in the windshield, and, and I knew there was nothing at that point I could do more. I was a passenger. Amazingly, he escaped without serious injuries. Was it a wake-up call for you, RC? It's a wake-up call, definitely. But we don't know what he woke up to. He went right back to racing. Now, earlier, we cut out the races. But if you have an even shorter attention span, these next 27 seconds are just for you. Gourmet wipeouts with none of the filler. of disaster. Max S. Coming up, the wrong way to conquer a mountain. Wave bye-bye. It's 10 p.m. Does your mother know where you are? Oh, face planted in the street. Uh-oh, jet skis busted. Time to bail. If you want to see the true face of pain, hang out for our Max X list of wipeouts. All them other shows are for wings. You got Max X. Yo, welcome back to Max X. South America rules, baby! Yeah! Yeah, it rules as some of the worst Argentinian wipeouts we've seen in a long time. Check out these white powder wipeouts. One's our favorite. You gotta love their badness. They are true masters of the most difficult of all moves. The face plan. Welcome to Lehigh, Utah, where there's not much to do except hurt yourself. things you can do on a skateboard, but these slackers aren't doing any of them. This is a volatile mix of raging hormones, raging attitude, and raging street rash. There's a lot of parents who like to say that skateboarding is a total waste of time. But hey, look at what can be learned from this physics project. Them skulls bounce pretty high when they slam into concrete. As you know by now, we love a good wipeout. Especially when it involves a bike, a little dirt, and those goofy bicycle pants. There's just so many different ways you can eat it on a bike. Watch for your favorite. one 
happens to be ours. The rider eats it, and some lucky fan gets to go home with a new bike. Oh, yeah. The guy riding on the ground in pain is extreme dirt biker Neil Wong. All right, relax. What put him here? Neil was invited to be part of a film being shot by an extreme sports company. These dudes are jumping their bikes about 100 feet. We did a practice session to see how the jumps were throwing us and how our bikes were running, basically to test everything out before we um, were doing it for the film. Everything was going well until Neil's last practice jump. Push my legs from you down. Oh, bro. What up? Ah. New guy. You bought him out? Ah, f he jumped down. off. Down. Oh. Jumped. Here's that wipeout in slow motion. I realized I was in trouble immediately when I took off from the jump. I had about three and a half seconds of air time to react. And that's not very much time for anyone to uh, think of a life or death situation. Again, frame by frame. Shortly after takeoff, it appears that the front wheel started to turn sharply to the right, pulling Neil off course. Struggling to maintain control, he decides to bail, and he's heading feet first toward the ground at about 60 miles an hour. I felt the best and the safest way was to get the bike as far away from me as possible because the bike causes more harm than actually Mother Earth. Not this time. Mother Earth can be real nasty. You all right? The impact shattered both of Neil's ankles. Oh, my Right, my legs are Both my legs are Neil's bones had to be bolted back together. It took months for him to heal. Check out these souvenirs of his wipeout. A lot of people ask me when they come to my house if uh, these are pieces from my bike. Actually, all of this came out of my legs. Once again, no better feeling than flying. Right? Until you make that tough landing. Oh, my you all right, brother? Both my legs are hurt. When you're inside a barrel, that's a whole different feeling. It's the closest thing that I've had to a religious experience. Welcome to the High Church of Wipeouts. monsters break. It's like having a wall of concrete crashing down on you. You're scared every time you're surfing in big waves. It's almost like a euphoric kind of fear. You feel like you don't want to go anywhere else. This is right on the edge of life and death. And if they don't kill you, they can damage you real good. There's been many times when I've fallen on a wave and felt like I don't know what's going to happen to me. Usually when I do that, I just crouch up and do a little ball and cover my head and just prepare for the worst. Big wave surfing takes big time nerves and a big time tolerance of pain. Hey, this ain't surfing. This is survival and the home of Major League Wipeouts. You're hitting it hard with Max Axe. Coming up, a Canadian takes the fall, eh? Houston, we have a problem. A New Yorker puts his back into it. And if that doesn't have you reaching for an ice pack, keep it right here for our Max Axe list of wipeouts. Max Axe, we got your back. Down with Max X. Five, four, three, two, one. Ignition. We have liftoff. But unfortunately, it's a boat. The boat was designed to never blow over. Yeah, that was the idea, Ken. Ken Dryden, 
and his crew thought they'd really hit on something when they designed the Miss Elan. Earlier in one of the qualifying heats of the Seattle Seafair Hydro Race, the Miss Bud Boat ate it. Ken thought it could never happen to him. This is Ken's last qualifying run. He needs to win. He's got his boat up to about 160 miles an hour. Suddenly, the boat does what it's not supposed to do. It takes off and launches more than 100 feet in the air. Again in slow motion from Ken's point of view. We came out of the corner and uh, started down the back chute. And we hit a couple big rollers there. The boat just accelerates off the water and uh, it's like taking off in a fighter jet. You got that right, Ken. The impact is just like falling off of a 10-story building and hitting the, the concrete. When the boat hit the water, you see the, the front of the boat severed. The, the driver's cockpit actually split right in front of my hips. The rescue divers grabbed the front of the cockpit, rotated back around so they could bring my leg, get me out. Ken was busted up really bad. Three broken vertebrae, two broken legs, two broken ankles. He spent four months in a wheelchair. Ken's walking now, but this wipeout ended his hydro boat racing career. This guy doesn't know it, but his jet ski is about to experience a mechanical failure that will prevent him from being able to control the steering. And on this show, that can only mean one thing. Again, it's slow motion. The jet ski slams into the side of the boat. And this dude's cartwheeling through the sky. One more time, frame by frame. The jet ski approaches the boat. Now watch what this guy does. He knows he's going to eat it, so he actually leaps into the air. Check out how close his head comes to smashing into the boat. Whoa! Just misses. He went into a killer wipeout and only came out with a few bruises. Come on, who says Canada's boring? These Canadian guys own the street, and they're rocking out. Rob Inrig is doing a few extreme bike stunts, and he's pretty good. He sticks the first jump. Feeling cocky, he's gonna do it again. Let her rip, Rob! Oh, yeah! Nice wipeout! Again in slow motion. He flies down the hill. The bike goes airborne, and he wipes out. Again, slow motion and frame by frame. Rob gains speed. He leaps. He appears to have the height to clear the railing. But right here, his rear wheel clips the railing, and Rob's eating pavement. Note to dudes in Canada. Helmets are available. Put them on your head. I think we're doing some okay. Rob dislocated his shoulder. So what's he learned? If you're going to be doing stunts like this that are dangerous, maybe it's a good idea to wear some body protection and be sure that you know what you're doing and accept the risks you are taking and accept the consequences that you may face afterwards. Take it from a man who knows his wipeout. <laughs> New York Central Park. That's about 50 feet of cold, hard steel. If you're a blader, real cold and real hard. Jonathan Ortiz thinks he can ride this rail all the way down. Well, he can. He's in some serious pain. There are a bunch of the other skaters around that were watching this at the same time. Their initial reaction, they were like screaming and yelling and telling everybody not to touch him. And I screamed, don't touch him. 
Neil's friends don't listen and they move him to comfort him. Here's that wipeout again in slow motion. Jonathan loses it about halfway down the handrail. He goes soaring through the air and does a face plant in the sidewalk. Let's see what went wrong. Jonathan has nice form. Everything's going well until right here. Jonathan tries to switch feet. He loses balance and then he goes flying. Now watch the landing. Jonathan hits the concrete face first. His body bends backwards. And his skates smash him in the head. Oh! 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 Need an ambulance? Yeah! I went for it? Yeah. Amazingly, Jonathan suffered no head, neck, or spinal cord injuries. I can't imagine that somebody can actually bend like that and not break anything. Yeah, neither can we. If you can take it, we got it. Maximum exposure keeps its promise. The nastiest, hurtingest falls of all time. Our Max X list of wipeouts. with the worst wipeouts we've ever seen. It's X-List time. Coming in at number three. Give a quick shout out to all the older folks in your house and tell them to hurry in because they'll hate what we're about to show you. Professional skater Chris Edwards is going to try to leap over that railing and land on the street below. There he goes. He's up. He's down. Again, slower. This dude doesn't even come close to clearing the railing. Here's a slow motion look from another angle. You can see the right here. Chris's left skate clips the railing. And he puts his arms out to break his fall. So what happens after a fall like that? This is why they tell you not to come up here. People again. think you're an idiot. Okay. You okay? You gotta be kidding me, man. That's about as insane as it gets. That's not extreme. That's stupid. It's beyond. Well, if he would have made it, he probably would have clapped. Who cares if he made it? Yeah, well, that's it's up. It's all relative, though. That's his, that's his lifestyle. Uh, it's, it's true. His lifestyle was living, man. Okay. That's almost dying, living, right? Living. Been there, seen it, done it. This wipeout broke Chris's left wrist and shattered his right elbow. You have an ambulance on the way? Forget the ambulance. Chris's buds are going to take him to the hospital. You gotta love what happens at the hospital. They asked Chris to sign in, even though both arms are busted up. I can't sign up when I got their broken arm. Good old American health care. And the wipeouts keep on coming. Number two on the X list. That's Daredevil, Seth Enslaw. He hopes to set a new ramp-to-ramp -ramp record by jumping his motorcycle more than 200 feet. Now, if he comes up short, he'll crash into one of those 60 Harley-Davidson motorcycles parked between the ramps. And he's off. Will he clear the Harleys? He made it. So where's the wipeout? Ah, here it is. Seth ain't moving. This looks bad. Let's roll the tape back and see the crash in slow motion. You can see that Seth has the height and distance to easily clear the Harleys. He smacks onto the ramp at 80 miles an hour. The bike crumbles. Then it's Skid City. Seth lies motionless for a few minutes. But then he's up on his feet and he's celebrating a new world record of 229 feet. Here's that wipeout in Seth's words. 
The bike, when I landed, snapped, the triple clamp snapped off, and the front fender snapped off, and the wheel kind of was still spinning and hit me in the face. Broke the visor off my helmet, gave me a fat lip, and uh, then I just went over the bars and just tumbled, and luckily the bike didn't run over me, and it kind of slid next to me for 50 feet or so. My lifetime goal is to jump 300 feet, which is a football field. Don't worry, Seth. Max Sax will be waiting for that one. And here's the heavy hitter on the X list. The worst wipeout we've ever seen. This is a tough Spanish man. And what do you think put him in this wheelchair? Was it A, a mad bull, B, a jealous lover, C, a barroom brawl, or D, none of the above? The answer is D, none of the above. It was actually this. Firefighters in Spain are conducting a rescue training session. Two of them are tied to a cable attached to a chopper. And it's about to get ugly. Slow motion look at that horrifying accident. The chopper just starts to lift the firefighters when the cable snaps and they plunge 200 feet down the mountain. Amazingly, the firefighters survived, were treated for injuries and both were back home within two weeks. Take the risk, pay the price. <gasps> Maximum exposure. Wipe out. That's not extreme, that's stupid.